Hello everyone, I'm Kogi from Kogi.in and you're watching this review of Le Echo Le 2 smartphone. This handset is priced at Rs 11,999. I bought it from the Le Mal website. It's rose gold color, metal body with a very good build and finishing. Let's quickly go through the specifications. Screen is 5.5 inches Full HD with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. And uh, before we continue further, many users are complaining about this screen defect. As you can see when I'm pressing the screen hard, you can see the screen deform. This is not a defect and uh, let me explain. This is my thumb. Nail color is pinkish. When I apply pressure, you can see the nail color changing. It turns off white from the tip. This is normal pressure. This is two times the pressure and uh, I'm going to increase the pressure. This is three times the pressure. You can see the difference. And now we are going to check the pressure as well as the effect. Now this is normal pressure. Usually this is the kind of pressure I use when using a smartphone. This is two times the pressure, no effect. And I'm going to increase the pressure three times. And as you can see, the screen has started to deform. And if I do the same thing in the center of the screen, I get a cushion feeling. It feels like the first layer is touching the second layer. Sometimes you might hear some sound. The company has already confirmed this is not a defect. They are using a gasket below the display. Now this can happen on many smartphones depending upon the pressure you apply. Now this is the Mi Max handset and when I apply three times the pressure, I get a mild deformation as you can see. On the Le Echo Le 2 handset, this is not a defect if you're using it in a normal way. If you're using it abnormally, well, a lot of things can happen. This is a touch screen and there is a difference between touch and press. This handset is powered by Snapdragon 652 octa-core processor using Adreno 510 GPU and to do benchmark actually shows the correct chipset Snapdragon 652 64-bit. Le2 is running EUI 5.6 based on Android Marshmallow 6.0.1 and here are the good number of sensors, accelerometer, magnetic, gyro, proximity, light and hall. There is 32 GB of internal storage space and 3 GB RAM. On the back you'll find a 16 megapixel autofocus camera with dual tone LED flash and this is the fingerprint sensor, Touch ID based. Simply tap the fingerprint sensor to unlock. It is accurate but it does take some time. This is a dual SIM handset. There are two nano SIM slots. There is no micro SD card slot so 32 GB is all you have. Let's quickly check out the contents inside the box. Here is the box pack. The star values are clearly mentioned and inside you'll find the Le2 smartphone with a 3000 mAh built-in battery, a silicon case, SIM tray ejector pin, user guide warranty card, USB type-c cable, fast charger, maximum output is 12 volts to amp and the final content is this CDLA headphone adapter. CDLA stands for Continual Digital Lossless Audio. You either use a CDLA headphone or this adapter that comes with built-in chipset that processes the audio information. Sound quality is awesome even with this adapter. However, if you're using this adapter, you need a good quality earphone or a headphone that needs to be plugged into this 3.5mm audio jack. I'm still waiting for the CDLA headphones but the sound output from this adapter is also pretty awesome. Le2 seems bezel-less when you're using a dark theme or the screen is off but there are borders around the screen as you can see. Color reproduction is very good. Touch, not press, is smooth and responsive. Navigation buttons do light up and the viewing angles are also pretty good. Handset weight is 155 grams and thickness is 7.67 mm. Power button and volume rocker is on the right side. On the top there is a IR port. You can use this handset as a remote. SIM tray is on the left side and at the bottom this is the microphone. USB Type-C port and this is the speaker out vent. Secondary mic is on the back side. 3.5 mm audio jack is missing. Instead, you can plug in this adapter. You get this audio jack and you can connect your 3.5 mm audio headsets or earphones. There is built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and GPS. Hindi language along with some other Indian regional languages are supported. There is LED notification and this is how it looks. There is built-in Dolby Atmos. Make sure to enable this. This handset is also loaded with other lay features. Let's move on to the camera. Here is the camera interface. This is an autofocus camera. There is panorama, photo, video and slow motion option. 
Rear camera can shoot in 16 megapixel resolution. It can shoot 4K videos and front camera is a 8 megapixel shooter. Camera quality is average. For sample images and videos, do visit my website. The link is mentioned in the description section below. Let's find out how the hardware performs. Quadrant benchmark score is 40049. This is the N22 benchmark. The graphics is smooth as you can see. N22 benchmark score is also pretty impressive at 80,376. 3D score is 18,934. Battery temperature is well under control. Nina Mark 2 is 60.1 FPS and this handset supports 10 point multi touch. After 9 minutes, the battery dropped by 4% and the battery temperature is 37 degrees. Let's play some games Modern Combat 5. This hardware is very powerful and it can easily play many high end games, including this Modern Combat 5. I did not find any issues with this game. The next game that I played was the Asphalt 8. I played this game in high visual quality mode. Again, this game is also pretty smooth, very much playable, hardly any lags, even at the turns. The best part is that you can switch to other applications. For example, I'm playing the Modern Combat 5 now. And if I want, I can switch back to Asphalt 8 when needed and continue from where I left. Let's go back to Asphalt 8 resume so this is possible i played these games for about 22 minutes battery dropped by 10 percent and the battery temperature is 39 degrees the 3000 mah built-in battery does a decent job you can charge to 100 percent in 90 minutes and uh, on a full charge you can expect about three to four hours of non-stop moderate to heavy usage sound output is loud and clear i did not find any issues with the network signals the only disappointment is the camera quality that is just about average. This is definitely a very good handset if you ignore the camera part and it's available for a decent price of Rs 11,999.